Thank you all for joining us. This is, I believe this is my fourth installment of the Reverend Troy series. I want to thank you all for joining me. As you can see, I have a special guest. Um, introduce him. His name is Pastor Jeffrey Sledge. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I brought him on today. He's very, he's been very inspirational. He's been a motivator. He's been, and he's been a gift from, from God in my life. And he's given me a lot of encouragement and uplifting. Um, and just a lot of just positive energy. If I had to describe it in two words, it would be positive energy. But before we get started, I want to open this up in prayer. And then we're going to go from there. Okay, so if you join us, bow your heads. And then we're going to begin. Lord Father, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for breathing breath into our lungs, waking us up each and every day, Lord Father. We pray, Lord God, that you enable us and help us to be mindful and to count our blessings each and every day, Lord Father. Lord God, we pray that you continue to watch over us, our families, our friends, and even our enemies, Lord God. Watch over all of us, Lord Father. We pray, Lord Father, that this message reach someone who may be going through a very difficult time, may be facing challenges from left to right, Lord God. But we pray, Lord Father, that you see them through, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray that this message you allow us to decrease and your spirit increase in us, Lord Father, so that we can make a difference in someone else's life, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord Father, we thank you. Amen. 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 Okay, and that's something I have to start doing because, you know, if you look on a lot of my earlier, it's been a while since I've released a, a video. I've been busy. I've been preparing things. I've been mentoring folks, and we've been doing a whole lot. Um, but I've been wanting to get Pastor Jeffrey Sledge on because I wanted him to give his take on a lot of things that, a lot of topics, a lot of issues that we all face. And in, and in particular, we're going to talk about love. But before we get to love, we're going to talk about, you know, a lot about, it's just so much love on the street, it's just not there. It's just like, so many young men are becoming incarcerated. They're getting incarcerated at an early age. I was about 13 years old when I first was arrested. How old were you, Mr. Uh, Reverend Troy, I was 16. Well, when I... They weighed my juvenile rights at the age of 16 and charged me as an adult. I didn't have the opportunity to grow up like the other young gentlemen that was my in my age period. I didn't have that. I had to grow up inside of a prison setting. So other than that, it made me anger. It made me bitter towards society. And my upcoming was I came up in a church household. I got my pastor license back in 2016. I'm a member of the Temple of Praise under Bishop Lynn A. Staples. And I learned so much. I used to send my tithes when I was incarcerated to Bishop Staples. Whether it was $5, $3, $2. I was paying my tithes from prison. And we have a lot of things that go on inside of the institutions nowadays. It really ain't no reform there, no war, because nowadays sometimes you gotta be, you gotta pay, in Virginia you gotta pay to be locked up. Wow. Pay to be incarcerated. Yes. Yes. Now, in prison, now, at 16 years old, I know that was, I know that was a major, major challenge in your life. I mean, being exposed to prison. And I noticed that prison, not all, but in a lot of cases, prison makes a lot of our young men worse than they were before they went in. Why is that? What, what, I mean, what is the... What is the purpose of prisons? I mean, what, what do they do? What are they for? It's, it's called warehouse. It, it's, called, it's really called warehouse because what tends to happen is nowadays you have the prison systems on the stock market. So they make the money up off our use, the way it's so it became a business. Okay. And by, by it being a business, I had one buddy to tell me if I take $5,000 and 
Right. That five thousand dollars can turn into a hundred thousand dollars. I just gotta invest in the right wow. type of stocks in far as the uh prison system. In the public a lot of so the, the public is blind to this fact. A lot of them don't even know that prisons are becoming big bucks for government officials. Yeah. Any government officials yeah. are you're yeah. lying yeah. But, the gov but the government but the one thing about one thing about our government, they invest in what they believe in. They go it goes back into this right here. It was the old Willie Lynch theory. It goes back into this to where so if you take the, the father or the male out of the household, you leave it to where as though you have a single parent there in the household to where though she might be raising five kids, eight kids, nine kids, three kids, two kids. But it's hard up on that single mother because it's so hard to where as though only grace and mercy help her do this right here because it becomes a part of the community now. It becomes a part of our community. And once it comes a part of our community, it affects our community in a negative way because it ain't no proper guidance in the household. And as Jesus said in the Gospel of St. John, uh, verses 15, I mean, verse chapter, 15, 15. Yeah, chapter 15 and verse 13, he says, uh, ain't no greater love than this than a man to lay down like his life for his friends. So when Jesus showed up on the scene, Jesus laid down his life for his friends. So we all became a part of that one big family, which is his friends, as he said. He said, the things that I can do, I can leave you do greater things. Love. Love one another. Love your neighbor. Love your enemy. In, 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 in the book of Matthew, he talks about how many times you're supposed to forgive someone. Seventy times seven. Regardless of that, because it takes it takes it takes the village to raise one child. So being incarcerated, what what, what happens to me is it, it embedded in me the way as though how to come up out here and give back to society. I don't work numerous jobs. I love working with the youth. I love working with the community. I love volunteering. I love giving up my free time to give back to our youth or give back to our homeless people. And the Washington, D.C. era, we have the highest crime rate, we have the highest homeless rate, we have the highest disease rate, we have the highest drug rate, right? We have the highest robbery rate, we mm. have, and, we get, and, and we get down to the violent crimes as well because what? Ain't no love. Love being misguided. Mm. Now, I remember it was been about maybe a month ago, I was mentoring um, a group of young men. And matter of fact, before I get to them, I was speaking with a single mother, mm -hmm. and she called me. She's raising a 13-year-old son, and she said something. I, I'm going to paraphrase it. She was saying that, where are all the African-American women? I mean, it's as if they are an endangered species. You know, I, I took my head off to, to single mothers because they're they're they are doing two jobs. And they can only do but so much. Mm -hmm. But as men, particularly as African American men, you know, we seem not to be there. And some of the ones that are out here in society are just, you know, they're doing their own thing. Um, but why is it that we are an endangered species? When she said this, it really resonated with me because I was like, she, she has a valid point. Okay, the endangered species come in at this right here. The seed that she carried inside of her womb for nine months, right? Which is the male who laid down with her, right? The seeds carry on to the male. Statistics says nine times out of ten, the same behavior is going to be, be, be repeated with the child that the father went through from a male perspective, right? So if that male that she done laid down with, and, she, and he produced that seed inside of her, he produced the seed that's going to come out as a son. So the son going to be misguided as well because you don't have what? No love, no there, no one there in the household to show that kid the proper love. If the father got incarcerated nine times out of ten, the son going to get incarcerated. The government thinks 20 to 30 to 40 years down the line about building these 
prisons and invest in these prisons because they saying that the, the same behavior that the father betrayed, the same behavior that the son going to betray. Wow. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's just so tough because, you know, as a mother, you know, she can only be a mother. You know, it, it takes a man to teach a young man how to become a man. Masculinity is bestowed. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's just something to behold. And I talk to many young men. Um, and the one thing that I get from a lot of them when I speak to them, you know, they may not know as much as we know, but they know things that we don't know. Yeah. You know, especially with, with, with these phones, you know, these computers, you know, society has become so technologically advanced. But I also see that a lot of them have been bombarded with hip hop. And when I say hip hop, you know, you, you have some good rappers out there, but many of the, the rappers, and not downplay the rappers because I love rap music myself, but I just would, I just pray that we can have a, 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 a trend of more positive rap. Because a lot of these violent lyrics, these drug dealing lyrics, these degrading our females, a lot of this stuff sticks into these young minds. They absorb just about everything they see and hear. Do you feel that plays a role into some of this behavior? Behavior and some of this crime and some of this fatherlessness, some of this you know, chronic incarceration, drug addiction. Would you say hip hop plays a role in that, or would you say hip hop has a responsibility to try to make a difference in deterring some of this? I, I would put it like this here. When I think about hip hop, I think about this here. Parenting started at home, and when parenting started at home, if the mother or the father is in a household, and they allow their kids to look at it or see it on TV, I mean, by looking at it and watching it on TV, they're going to betray what they see. The human by itself, a lot of times, we might see a commercial on TV, right? When we see the commercial on TV, we go out and buy the product. Because they saying the product is a very low price, right? So we be treating mm -hmm. the same thing, but we doing it in a different way. So if the kid sees some negativity in the rap thing, the kid gonna repeat the same thing because parenting started at home. So I got, I, I can't take it away from rappers because the rap game is a business game. I can't take it away from them, but I gotta start with the parent. If the, if the kid is not left alone with one single mother raising them without no male positive male role models there in the household, ain't no telling what the kid might get his hands into. Now, this brings me to my next point. Well, this is same, similar point. What would you say it takes to raise a child? It takes a village. It takes a village to raise one child. It takes a village to raise one child. One child. One child. One child. In my upcoming... My mother prayed for me, the community prayed for me, the community chastised me. The government done set a law in place to where though you can't even chastise your own child now. If you put your hand up on a child, the child got the rights to call the police up on the parent. So many parents are parenting with a hands-off policy. Yeah, because they don't want to be incarcerated for not hitting their child or whatever like that because the children have rights the same as adults have rights, right? Mm -hmm. But the, but the, but the, it, it, it's going to show you that the government is constantly taking control of our youth anyway. We only produce what we see, right? Once we produce what we see, we begin to act on that behavior. So if the parents doing everything they're supposed to do, to make sure this kid ain't listen to the rap music, whatever, they gonna betray what they hear. Or they gonna betray what they see. And a lot of times, like, and it's getting into, getting onto me, um, as, as Reverend Troy, I, I, you know, a lot of times I face a lot of criticism. People are always trying to dig into me, me, me. But I often ask them, I say, it's not about me. I say the name that my Lord Savior has bestowed upon me has a purpose. And rather than scrutinizing and criticizing me, I always ask them, what are you trying to do 
or what are you willing to do to make your community a better place? It start, it start, it start, and, and it goes back to this here, Reverend Troy. It goes back to this here. No greater love is this than the man to lay down his life for his friend. Out of the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verse 13, right? When Jesus showed up upon the scene, it goes back to this here. They wasn't sacrificing no more lambs, sheep, and goats within the Old Testament because Jesus died up on the cross for all of our sins. So we live by grace and mercy. But if the community starts sticking together, the way as though they showing to use something positive or give them something positive activities to do, an idle time is the devil's workshop. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. An idle mind is the devil's workshop every time. Because what tends to happen, because the kid is not getting the attention, so they look for attention elsewhere. Now, Pastor Jeff, what would you say was your turning point? When you, what, was, what was your turning point? I know that you, I remember that we spoke briefly earlier, and you told me that you were raised in church. Yeah, I, I was raised in Shaw Methodist Church. I was baptized as, as, little, a, child. as a child. Okay. With Reverend Stevenson at the time at Shaw Methodist Church right there on Jasper Place, the church still up and running. God bless uh, Reverend pa Pastor Stevenson. He, he passed, he went home to be with the Lord. So it made me go back to school and study the way as though to become a pastor. To become a pastor is when you pastor the people. You know what I mean? Because a sheep don't know what to do. Use the pastor over the sheep, so we got to guide the sheep the way it's going to go. Ain't no guidance in the household, or ain't that much love. The mother trying to show love by herself. Mm -hmm. I might got a, I might got a hundred sheep. It's one of them sheep going straight. I'm gonna leave the ninety nine and go after the lost one mm -hmm. in the name of love. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the churches that I know, a lot of churches that are in these communities where that's that are plagued with violence and crime oftentimes i ask myself like what more can the church do like what more should the church be doing well basically the church got to do a lot a lot of outreach ministry to our youth and to matter of fact i would be more correct about that not just to our youth but to the parents too Everybody going to need some type of counseling because if you don't counsel the parents and teach the parents how to become parents, because now you have babies raising babies. So the reflection of that, the grandmother might be 40 years old, the kid might be 16 or 14 years old. So how can a 14 year old raise the little baby by herself if she don't have the proper guidance? It go back to this right here. If the kid ain't got it in the right way. The kid going to find some other things to do to find the proper guidance. But he's misguided by trying to find the proper guidance in the wrong place. Wow. Now, I remember, and this was, this, this, this was like a couple of days ago, matter of fact. A relative of mine was showing me something on social media. You know, the social media is becoming, you know, Social media, our kids are just, they're engulfed in social media. Social media is, is a big, big thing. And it has its positives and its negatives. But what I seen on this video clip, the, the video clip was of two young girls. They had to be no more than 13 or 14 years old. And they were fighting. They were actually, you know, that one girl was viciously assaulting the other girl and they were just beating her. And it was just everyone at this fight were filming it with, the, with their camera phones. But what was even more disturbing and shocking was there was an adult present. There was an adult, a woman I believe to be within her 20s. She was filming the assault. And I say to myself, I mean, I was just, you know, I was upset at seeing these, at seeing these two young kids fight, but I was even more upset to see an adult not taking the responsibility, not stepping to the plate, not being proactive enough to step in and prevent the fight from happening, but rather filming it. And in one instance, she was ruling one of the girls' horns. 
I mean, like, what, what is really, what is going on here, Pastor Jeff? What is, what is that all about? Like, I'm just like, is this, have we, have we come to that in this day and time? Is it? I mean, it's just, uh, it's just shocking. I would say this here. God don't make no mistakes. God do not make no mistakes. Because he know what's going to happen before it happens anyway. It's just that the rules got to be laid down. The, the, the adults got to be stopped. They have to stop being afraid of our youth nowadays. A lot of adults is afraid to say something when they see the youth doing something wrong, something bad, something negative. You think they're I mean, intimidated? Hold on, something, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something the way is, though, let, let me say this right. They're intimidated because the first thing that tends to happen is, it goes back early on to my conversation. If it takes a village to raise one child, imagine a whole generation. Ration. That's been misguided. So the parenting it goes back to the parenting skills. A lot of them need parenting skills, but they don't want to ask for it because they think in the way as though, okay, I'm gonna try to take my son. It wasn't that you had to try back in our days. You going to church or you going to Sunday school or you going to the Bible study or things of this nation. The rules. If you don't have no rules in place. Things tend to happen without no rules. Ain't no strictness there in the community. Our community people is steady turning their head. So that's why I said the church need to do more outreach to the community, not just for that little boy or that little girl or, 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 our, or our little nieces and nephews or our cousins or family members or our kids or whatever. They need to do is outreach to both the youth and the adults, the parents, whether it's a single parent, whether it's both parents, because if you showing them by working a job in a positive way, he's saying his buddy on the streets, hey, his buddy showing them something different. So, so you say, so going back to the, it takes a village to raise one child, and I believe that I got. What would you say it takes to raise a generation? It's going to take. It's going to take. The generations before us to start stepping up because we older, we mature, and we know how we was raised. And by us being raised the way we was raised, we can't misguide our youth. It go back to the love piece. It was love always there in the community. From your grandmother respected, from your mother respected, from your aunts respected, from your uncles respected, from your family members respected. It was always love there and love in the community. The teacher love you did good, you brought home A's or whatever like that, or B's and things of that nature. It goes back to the community. The community has to build up on love. They got to, they got to let the fear go out the window and just deal with the love piece the way it's done because if God... So loved the world, he gave his only begotten yes, son. son. John 3, 16. You know what I mean? So what are we willing to give up to love our community? It's going to take generations to step up. That's, that, that's older than the younger generation. Now, it's now getting on, interesting, because getting on to our, our core topic was love. And I remember the first installment, the first video, I talked about love. But now I have Pastor Jeff here. I want Jeff to expand more on love. As far as, I remember there was a young lady and she asked me, to give her from a biblical perspective, she was, she asked me, what does love mean? Can you give me an example? And the best example that I gave her was a mother's love and care for her child. No matter what that child does in life, no matter what that child grows up to be, mom's love is unconditional. She's going to love that child no matter what. There is a love shortage in our community, but what would you say love is? Love is the key to success. Love is the key that unlocks the door. Love is the one that heals the wound. You know when you used to fall down, you might catch a scab up on you. Your mother remember, come and rub yeah. it up on you. I remember and those she days. was showing you love. She might put some peroxide, alcohol mm -hmm. up on you. 
It, it, it depends on how bad the wound was. Mother still showed you love. If you had a positive male figure in your life, you played football, basketball, any type of sports or boxing or whatever like that, you always have somebody there to show you love to patch up your wound. So we neglecting, it's a lot of neglect going on in our community nowadays without ain't no love being shown. That's why I said earlier on when you repeated that conversation that we just had, that the love piece, it goes so deep the way as though so when, when Jesus said, listen, ain't no greater love than this. Ain't no, you got to lay down your life. If you believe in something, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. That, I mean, that is so true. I mean, I, I look at our community, and I'm speaking particularly on the African American community. I find myself constantly comparing our communities to Asian communities, to Caucasian communities, to Spanish communities. And I noticed that within their communities, there's a lot of love. There's, there's, there's a lot of unity. There's a lot of sticking together. And when I look at our community, we're scattered abroad. It's almost as if everyone is in their own little world. You know, the family structure is, is shattered. And it goes to that male figure being taken out the household. And the problem is being on home. It's it's an epidemic. Mm -hmm. It's something that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. It's something that needs correction. How do you feel on the African American family structure? And we already talked about the father being missing. But Overall, would you say our family structure is, would you say our family structure could be better? I would say yes, the family structure can get better. The family structure will get better, right? With the absence of the father, if it ain't no father figures there in the household, it's our jobs and our duty, you as a reverend, I'm as a pastor, as the churches that we attend or the churches the way is that we have to come together and grab our community and go outreach to them. Because if we don't never outreach to them, they're going to continue on being misguided. And by them being misguided, the behavior going to lie the way as though the government is constantly raising our kids again. Like, yeah. and, it's, and it's sad that when we look at the government, you know, we have this, that we're dealing with this, this cold climate with, Police interaction with our young black males is just it's just getting getting out of hand. Um, you know, with the Michael Brown situations, the Freddie Gray, the Scott Walkers, even the Trayvon Martins. You know, I, I remember back in the day. You know, law enforcement was you know every community in in my hood had an officer. That's like a neighborhood officer that was assigned that or this person lived in the community. This person knew just about every young man on the street. Nothing went over his head. But officers nowadays are just, they're coming to suppress and contain. Call them like a cleanup crew. After whatever happens, happens, who, who's ever been shot or seriously hurt, they're coming to investigate and trying to, you know, find the bad guy. But where were you before this incident happened? You know, and, and I'm not trying to, you know, downplay law enforcement as a whole because there are some good officers out there. We just need more of them, and we need more of them to de de develop a better understanding of African Americans. Um, I remember I talked to a, a, a young man that told me he was allergic to police. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, I asked him, I said, what you mean you're allergic to the police? He said, I break out in hives. I can't trust them. You know, every five minutes, you know, an innocent young man is being shot. And I said, and I looked at, I mean, he really had a, a disdain for him. But I look at, there, there was an officer when I was raised, when I was being raised up, who you know, if a fight kicked off, you know, he wasn't trying to take nobody to jail. He would step up to the plate. He would break up that fight. He would sit both individuals who were fighting down. He would talk to them. He would mentor them. I mean, he was very active. I mean, he would take kids to 
Adventure World back in before the Six Flags. We take to Adventure mm -hmm. World. And they would take them out. He would take them out the community. He was proactive in that community. He just wasn't riding by trying to figure out who did what. Mm -hmm. He knew what was going to happen before it happened. Mm -hmm. And he got involved and prevented that from happening. So mm -hmm. if someone was going to hurt somebody or someone was plotting to do something, he was that involved in the community that he showed love. He looked at all of us as being his child. What's happening, what's happening nowadays, it goes back to this. They need more spiritual guidance. Some of our youth don't have no spiritual guidance. So without spiritual guidance, the spirit is in them anyway. Because they came from God. So they're going to be turned back into God. Turned back to God anyway. So, we need more churches, more mosques, more nation of Islam, or any spiritual faction to come in and help our community because it is hard. I, well, I always go back to the mother for a single parent to know everything about if she has multiple children. If she has four or five or, or three kids or whatever like that, and she working too, she don't have that much time to spend with that child. And she's on a fixed income. By her being up on a fixed income, if the little boy or little girl see it the way as though they want to go out and get their own stuff because they're learning bad behaviors in the community. So why can't the community show the youth the positive way how to about earning some money than going about there selling drugs, robbing people, or doing the negative thing instead of the positive thing? And it's our duty. It's our duty as pastors and red to show our youth or show our young people or show our elder people or show all the people that God is love. He loves us in spite of. It ain't no fear with God. You got to fear God first. Fear Him. Once you fear Him, everything will turn back to Him anyway. As you fear God, God say, He goes back to this head. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. How many of us willing to give our time and give our patience and give our love to our youth nowadays? Woo! Do you hear that, critics? I had, to, I, had to, I had to really pick that out there because a lot of folks are very quick to blame. They're very quick to point the finger. They're very quick to say, this is that, that is this. But they're not willing to step off of their porch. They're not willing to go out in the community. They're not willing to mentor a young man or woman. Well, Reverend Troy, it goes back to this, Rev. It's up to us. It's up to us. To start going to knock on them doors mm -hmm. and get the communities involved. involved. Yes. If any time they call the ambulance or they call the police in a low-income neighborhood where the crime rate is so high, the way is though people come outside and see what's the action, what's going on with the action, right? Why you can't come outside and help prevent the action before the action really takes place? Where is the love? We need more love in our name. We need more pastors, little reverends like you, pastors like me, to step up and give back to our community with unity and love. Mm. That's, I mean, that's, that's we can't do it by ourselves. We, we need unity this. and love. I, I remember reading a book, and the book was, I can't quite remember exactly one book is, but I caught this quote, and the guy said that even weak people, when united, are powerful. And we need more unity. We need, we must unite. We must come together, and we must tackle this thing from the from the root. We can't just continue to just focus on why, 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 why. It should be more so. What can I do to prevent this from happening? later on. 
as 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 I hear you and I hear you clearly, we need to have community meetings, more pastors. If we got if we if we got it, it, it's sad to say this, right? It's very sad to say this. If we have in our community the same amount of liquor stores or stores that are selling tobacco products, the things that hinder our youth nowadays or drugs in, 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 in the community, and we have churches in the community, something is definitely wrong. If the church don't step out on faith and start taking back their community, it lies with the church as well. The church have a job to do as well, and it's called outreach ministry. outreach ministry. The things that we're doing is outreach ministry. Giving back to our youth, giving back to our communities as well, because if not, that means as the kid get older, he might die of cirrhosis of the level, die using drugs, OD or whatever. So other than this, it's our duty, not just to come into the community and ask them to come to church. Let's show them what the church is really about. Wow. If we have, if we have, say hypothetically speaking, if we got 2,000 members, if we got 2,000 members in our church, let's start putting them 2,000 members to work. Right. To give back into our right. community. Right. So that's, that, so that goes to show you, it's a village right there that's trying to help the whole the whole community as well, but helping them from a positive perspective. Yeah, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's interesting that you bring it up because a lot of um, folks who are not in the church, they have a misconception, and even some folks in the church have a misconception of the church. They look at the church as being Rick and Morty, when in all actuality, as you mentioned, the church starts with us. The church mm -hmm. is right here in our heart. This is where the church starts at. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, a lot, a lot of folks have lost sight of that, and some folks don't even know of that. So we are the church, and the church has to come out, has to do more. All hands on deck. Everyone has to get involved. No child should be left behind. It was a, a it was a, a, a policy. One of our former president George Bush, he, he implemented called "No Child Left Behind." Act. It was mm -hmm. something dealing with the schools education but this initiative as we all know summer is is here all I mean we're pretty much the weather's getting hot people anticipate when the weather gets hot crime goes up mm -hmm. which history shows that's true so if we know crime is going up when it gets hot we should be doing something we should be making preparation to prevent these acts of crime. And you know, a, a lot of times folks say, you know, what's wrong, this and that. What can they do? Well, I'll tell you something that someone is going to do. Um, and I'm going to let him speak more on it. Um, starting this summer that we know many children won't be able to get a summer job. Some of them will be left, you know, at home. They will have free time to catch up on more studies and spend with their families. And we're also going to have some that's going to go out, commit crimes, do things they have no business doing. But we want to help them. We want to provide them with a way out. We want to deter them from committing a criminal act. So Pastor Jeff has an initiative program in which he's going to be employing young men and women particularly in the D.C. area and some in the Prince George's County area, to go out. And now, and now explain, I want to make sure this is exact, I want to make sure I'm not leaving nothing. I want you to explain it. This what it's called is, what I'm doing is, uh, what I would like to give back to our community as well. Some of our kids haven't never been up out of South Peace, or they've never been out of Prince George's County. Or, you know, so them type of areas there, we want to show them something different. We want to show them downtown, we want to take them out on out, and we want to show them Six Flags, we want to show them Kings and Mary. It ain't just stuck here in, the, in their neighborhood. A lot of kids don't have the opportunity, so they can work for their opportunity by selling waters, Gatorades, car washes, and just giving back to the youth. 
to prevent violent crimes, robbery, things of that nature. And that's called public safety. So we want to, we want to cover the public safety area because we need to get our youth back to show them more love, more proper guidance as well from a pastor's perspective, reverend perspective, the church and the community, and we just showing everybody love. Anybody that want to participate, we get the consent from their parents first. The youth that don't have, we're dealing with youth because if they don't have the summer job, the things of that nature, we're going to put them to work, try to try our best to show them the positive way. Even might show them some different schools to go to so they can further their education. Instead of them sitting at, at, in, in, in that same community all day long. And that's amazing that, you know, that, that this idea, you know, this was just, this was a gift from heaven that just came down. And I want to let you all know, if you all are interested in, in helping out, wanting to volunteer, maybe want to donate money to help further our cause, you can contact Pastor Jeff at Reverend Jeff 68 at gmail.com, and that's spelled R E V. J E F F number sixty eight. New me just pick the number at gmail.com. And if you want to reach me, we have Troy A3 at gmail.com. Or you can send us a comment, let let us know what we can additional service that we may be, be able to offer. Um, but we have to come together. We have to unite, we have to address this issue, and we we have to save these young people because if we don't save them. No one else seems to be willing to step up to the plate. But this is, I implore you all, I call each and every one of the individuals that's viewing this, I call you to act. I call you to step up. I call you to be proactive. Just mentoring one child's life, you are reaching a generation. And just as Pastor Jeff has said, it, it, it takes a village just to raise one child. It's going to take generation to raise a generation. So I want to I want to thank you all for joining us. You know, Pastor Jeff will be back. You know, this, this guy is very inspiring. This 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 guy has yeah I've learned so much wisdom I have extracted from him. I mean he just he teaches me so much. And it, and you know he's if I had to describe him in two words it would be positive energy. So I thank you all and and Pastor Jeff is going to pray us out, and you know I wish wish you all the best, and I pray that you continue to view us, continue to you know pass this on, let a friend know, but most importantly, get involved. Get tickets out, Brad. Yeah, I mean, Pastor Jeff. Yeah. Uh, dear Lord, we come to you humble as we know how. Thanking you, Lord, for this is day that the Lord has made. We still rejoice and be glad up here in the mercy of the Father. Lord, we just want to thank you for watching over us, Mercy of the Father. Lord, give us the strength and the wisdom to see our youth and our young people too, Mercy of the Father. Even helping the parents, Mercy of the Father. Keep on giving us the vision to give back to our communities, Mercy of the Father. Let them know that they're not lost without us, Mercy of the Father. Let us show them kind, love, peace, happiness, and joy, Mercy of the Father. Let us show them some positive things they can do with their lives. Instead of going to prison, instead of hurting one another, instead of killing one another, Mercy of the Father. Just keep on giving us the positive energy. Create love and make us out to make us to be your children as we always your children. But let us pour the love into someone else that needs it. And we want to thank our viewers for viewing this right here. We want to thank them from the bottom of our hearts. Mercy on Father. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all and I will see you again later. God bless.